what, like, what's going on. Hi Beats, it's EKG. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome here. If you're new, my name is Ebony, but I like to go by my pen name, EKG. And today I am going to be doing a book review on Eileen by Otessa Moshbeg. And before we get into it, I just want to do a little disclaimer. Am I in no way qualified to critique her writing? I'm not here to do that. I'm here to talk about just the overall plot of the book and my interaction with the work. So like I was saying before, <laughs> me doing a book review on Eileen by Otessa Moshfig is a continuation of another video I have on my channel in which I read Homesick for Another World by Otessa Moshfig. I did a book review, but that one was more of a rant and a spur of a moment book review. I just think that Otessa Moshfig is a very interesting author because her work is very polarizing. People either love it, hate it, spark from it, wish they had never read it. I actually saw on Goodreads someone comment that they bought My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshbeg because it came across a review of someone literally trying to set the book on fire. Well, first I'll start off with just the story of Eileen. What, like, what's going on? So Eileen is told from the perspective of the narrator, Eileen Dunlop, and her experience growing up in a town that is unnamed. The town is in New England, somewhere in between New York City and Boston, but we never get an actual name of the town. And we are thrown into Eileen's world. It's very mundane, very bleak, very dark. And essentially Eileen is giving you a bit of a peek into her life at the time. She is currently working at a juvenile detention center called Moorhead. And she is a 20 something in the novel. I believe she's around 23, 24. Coming, just coming out of her early 20s, still trying to find herself and feeling very bored and resentful with her current life situation, but she is her alcoholic father's caretaker. What's very interesting about this is that Otessa Moshbeg's writing is so good. <laughs> Like I was saying before, I'm not here to trash on her writing because what, who would I be to do that? Nobody. We are getting this picture of Eileen. We get insight into her family, to how she is and why she is the way that she is, past traumas. There are tons of content warnings going into this book. I just think that you should look them up. And she's also working at Moorhead as a secretary in a juvenile detention center. And in comes a, another character, Rebecca, who Eileen develops this fascination with and wants to be validated by. Like she actively seeks out Rebecca's attention because Rebecca is around the same age as Eileen and she just is more glamorous and more in tune with her body than Eileen is. Through this fascination with Rebecca, she finds herself at the center of a crime. So that's where the book starts off at, and that's just the general synopsis. It is a very interesting premise to begin with. Just the general narration through Eileen, it's told in a flashback, and it's also taking place in 1969. So it feels very bleak, very dreary, very dreadful. But also comedic at times, it's very dark humor <laughs> that Eileen has and for some reason I am stupid when it comes to reading comedy in books. I will read a book unless it's blatantly like this, like I'm trying to be funny, I don't get it. I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I found that the writing was very comedic at times in Eileen and Eileen is just very awkward character. She does very fringe things, very questionable things, things that will get you arrested. And this is told as a flashback so we at the beginning of the novel we know that Eileen is much older now and she's retelling this one week of her life in which her life drastically changed. So yeah, that is Eileen by Otessa Moshfeg. That is the spoiler read, just kind of synopsis, what you can expect. Now let's talk about how unhinged this book was. Really, really, really 
was not expecting the twist that happened i was blown away i was reading i'm like okay where's what's the crime what's gonna happen so as i was saying before lean works in the moorhead juvenile center and in the juvenile center a new boy gets introduced and so this is how eileen <laughs> gets herself tripped up okay she's never had friends rebecca invites her out one night to go out on the town go to o'hara's which is eileen's spot um, they go get drinks. Eileen is getting interest from guys that she's never had an interest before. She's very dazzled and very entranced by Rebecca, who apparently comes from money, is very well off, well graduated from Harvard, and decides to come to Exville to work in the juvenile center. So Eileen's like, what are you doing here? Like, a girl like you should not be in a town like this. So that fascinates Eileen, and the fact that Rebecca is giving her attention is talking to her it seems as though she wants to know Eileen on a personal level and get below that death mask that Eileen feels more inclined to just basically do whatever she needs to do to foster that relationship so it is now Christmas Eve so Rebecca begins working at the juvenile center as Eileen's co-worker I believe Rebecca is in charge of creating the education courses for the juvenile the youth so there is a boy who committed a very atrocious crime I'm not gonna go into detail about that if you want to learn more like please read the book but it's very graphic and he decides to go mute Rebecca is fascinated by him and they all witness Leonard Polk's interaction with his mother when she visits the center and she's heartbroken, she's crying, she's like, why am I in this position, why am I in this situation? And Leonard's just looking at her and he's like, Neh, not saying anything. So everyone's like, that's kind of weird. And his mother is acting in a way that shows that she might know more about the crime and why it happened. And so, <laughs> and so Rebecca takes it upon herself to use Eileen to get access to Leonard Polk's file to learn more about his family, the crime that happened, and why he's mute now. So Rebecca gets all this information. She invites the Polk boy into her office. They have a discussion, but Eileen doesn't know what goes on. Eileen and Rebecca hang out. I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. I apologize. But after Eileen and Rebecca hang out, Rebecca's like, oh, why don't you come to my house on Christmas Eve? We can hang out, have some drinks, you know, just, you know, girls having fun. And Eileen's like, oh my god, yes, because at this point she's still obsessed with Rebecca and she's doing literally anything in her willpower to agree with her and to hang out with her and to be in her presence. So Eileen's like, oh yeah, girl, I'll be there. <laughs> and now I have to mention that at this point Eileen's father had quite a bit of a slip and now the police confiscated his gun and now it's in Eileen's possession because they don't trust her father with it because he was pointing it at children walking home from school. Like, is this not crazy? Like, how do you sit and think about this and write it in a book? I don't know, but... And the police confiscate it. They're like, no, we don't want you to have this gun. And so they give it to Eileen. She goes over to Rebecca's house, and as she's driving there, she's like, hmm, this neighborhood doesn't seem like a neighborhood that a beautiful, rich young single woman would live in like she's very sketched out by the neighborhood and so anyway she goes inside the house Rebecca's like in this robe she's chilling but Eileen notices that Rebecca's energy is a little off she's like weird vibes but okay Eileen like the classy girl she is she bought some alcohol with her so she's like listen we're gonna have a drink a bottle of wine sit down unwind relax let's get Let's get to know each other. And Rebecca is like, okay. The conversation is very awkward at first. They both admit it. They're like, listen, you know, this is weird. Eileen's like, okay, maybe I'll just leave then because you're acting very strange. And Rebecca's like, no, wait, like, like, please, like, don't leave yet. I want to talk to you about something. And Eileen's like, okay, what do you want to talk about? She's like, do you know? that Polk family you know the one the, the guy the the little boy who just committed like an egregious murder she's like oh yeah I know about him <laughs> and then she says oh and by the way this isn't my house this is Leonard Polk's house and his mom is tied up in the basement I'm like what <laughs> I literally gasped I was like <gasps> Eileen finds herself now in a hostage situation 
and she is desperate for Rebecca's approval and attention and love and affection that she is now partaking in Rebecca holding Leonard Polk's mother hostage. I can't even begin to tell you how shocked I was because I audibly was like, <gasps> like I gasped and it was like, no way, like no way. So I'm like, oh my God. Now mind you, for me, like the there's no plot really, it's just Eileen talking about her life, then you meet Rebecca, so it's the anticipation is building, it's building, and then it's like you reach this one point and you're like, okay, so this is the point of everything. And that happens around page 200. I believe there's only like 240, 260 pages in Eileen, so it's basically at the end. And I just became so transfixed with the story at this point. So Eileen and Rebecca have Leonard Polk's mother wrapped up downstairs in her own basement and they're in a hostage situation and Eileen has her father's gun and so she decides to use that to intimidate Leonard Polk's mother to talk and say everything she knows about the crime to absolve Leonard Polk of any wrongdoing because Rebecca is just so convinced that he's innocent um, even though like he did commit a crazy crazy crime. And so we just spiral from there. Eileen is so desperate for Rebecca's love and attention and she intimidates her. Things happen. Rebecca then takes the gun from Eileen, tries to act like she knows what she's doing, accidentally shoots <laughs> Leonard Polk's mom and gives her a flesh wound like she shoots her in the arm. And Eileen's like, you know what Rebecca, don't worry, like we're gonna, we're gonna make it through this, we're going to escape. And I am going to take the blame for this. I'll do everything. Don't worry. Just meet me at this one place because her entire life Eileen has wanted to leave Exville. So this to her feels like her one moment. So she decides basically to pin the entire crime on her father, which is wild. Decides to flee town. She relocates to New York City, I believe, and takes on a new identity and she acts like nothing ever happened. So that's the end of the book. <laughs> we meet Eileen back again, just recounting on what happened, why and how she was as impressionable and foolish and just very naive when it came to Rebecca in the entire situation in the first place. And it feels as though someone's interviewing her. I don't know if they're investigating the crime that happened or if someone found out about the story and it's been decades later and they just want to unearth what happened that day on Christmas Eve in 1969. But wow, what a ride. Uh, here are my final thoughts. <laughs> I just have never really read anyone quite like her. She makes her readers very unsettled, but she maintains a very interesting balance It being comedic at times, um, but deeply disturbing <laughs> a lot of the times. And yeah, I can see how it's very triggering for people, I'm not gonna lie. I, I want to say around the middle of this book, I felt myself slipping a little bit, you know, just a little bit. I sympathize with Eileen, which is something that I missed out in Homesick for Another World, and I think that's just because it was short story collections. And I do think that for me personally, Otessa Moshvig's writing really resonates with me in a novel format instead of in a short story collection format just because I need something to grasp onto and I got that background information, loads of it, characterizations for Eileen. And I don't know, even though she was very timid and quiet and she was also very snappy and very funny at times, I thought that was a bit refreshing when the subject matter was very heavy. The labor that I had to put into actually getting into this book, I mean, I had to dedicate basically reading the entire book for the ending to turn out the way that it did. I thought it was phenomenal. So I ended up rating, I ended up rating Eileen like three and a half stars, but I'm in between three and a half to four stars, honestly. I just think the ending and all the pieces just came together beautifully that I really got the whole picture. But yeah, I believe that's all I wanted to say for this. This might be a little hefty um, book review video, but <laughs> instead of reacting out of pure emotion like I did for Homesick for Another World, I wanted to give you like an actual breakdown of my thoughts, the plot, 
everything like that. If you like this video, please let me know with liking the video. Um, you can also subscribe if you feel so inclined to my YouTube channel. Uh, all my social medias are linked down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye. I was like, yo.